It's a great day. It's a great day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, almighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. This is the day that you, O oh God, has made. We shall be glad in it. We shall rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 praise. Power be unto your holy name, O oh God. Father, we are thankful for another great, uh, gracious day, another faithful day that you have made. Father, we are thankful to be alive today to see this great day. We are thankful, Lord, and we come before you with all our households. We are coming to bless your holy name. We come to magnify you. There is none like you, God. Libra kaso kupra la dize tobra hana kalabara sala hada zole ali bukuria. Libra si kalajara maso tole geli heso tole alabahanda. Ish kalosi libra hada braka sheli mando rozoko prakata le mando ro braha kataria. E libra li hazo papa pa yida la zia le brahada. Likra zubra kanda brahanda kuria le mando ro brahada li hedozo. Thank you, Almighty God, for a great day. Thank you, Almighty God, for another wonderful day. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you with all our heart, with everything that we have, with all that you have given us, O God, even to bless your holy and mighty name, O God. Blessed be your holy name, faithful God of Israel. We honor you. We magnify you because you alone are God. I will glorify you. I will give you all praise. We we'll give you all honor. We we'll give you all adoration in the precious name of Jesus. Leka barazir matori hale brusa tali manderi hezo tori ala busha mali hezo kara baratiri barahanda. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful. Father, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Almighty Father, we come before you because you are our Father. You reign forever. You reign from eternity to eternity, O God. From everlasting to everlasting you are, and we are grateful to be your sons and your daughters. Almighty God, we honor you because your steadfast love for us never ceases, and we are thankful. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for your loving kindness, for being our shield, in this time for being our banner for being our bulwark for being our hiding place father we are thankful to you god father we come before you even by the blood of jesus we come before you in the con in the midst of the congregation in heaven to say blessed be your holy name almighty god we are grateful to you thank you heavenly father father i ask of you today lord let the heavens over us as we begin to share your word. Let the heavens open before us in the name of Jesus. Father, let us see your glory today. Let us see your beauty today. Father, Lord God, we come because we have none else but you, O oh God. You are the Almighty. I will acknowledge you. I will celebrate you, our King and our God. Father, as we honor you today, Lord. Father, look down upon us, O oh God, and hear us in Jesus' name. Father, Lord God, do not throw our prayers back to us, but remember your loving kindnesses towards us and show us your goodness in Jesus' name. Father, as many that will be seeing me today, Father, let them see your glory in the name of Jesus. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, let the people that will hear you today through the words of my lips, oh God, let them hear your voice and let their lives be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as many lives that this word will be coming in their direction. Let their word, let this word turn their life around for good according to the good purpose that you have for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I give you praise and thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome you to church today in the name of Jesus. I know the Lord will do something good in your lives today in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, I know the word of God that is coming in your direction today will do you good in the mighty name of Jesus. The word will empower you. The word will strip out the works of darkness in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. This word will bring liberty, will bring liberation, will bring deliverance your way in the mighty name of Jesus. This word will cause the word of God to surround you and you will see the glory of God. You, the word of God will come to you in a powerful way today. 
because the word of God is life and the word of God is power. It will come in your direction. It will bless you. It will bring healing to you. It will bring comfort and hope to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. And the church of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be very brief and very fast today. Uh, the, the title of the message that I shall be bringing your way today as the Lord leaves is Shine Your Light. Hallelujah. Can somebody say that with me? Shine your light. Say that one more time. Shine your light. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. If you turn with me your Bibles, hallelujah, glory be to God to the book of John chapter number one you will see what the Bible says that beginning from verse one John chapter number one let's start with this John chapter number one beginning from verse one we shall read all the way to verse five the Bible says there in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God pay attention the word was God the word was with God and the word was God. It says the same was in the beginning with God. And I love what it says in verse 3. It says all things were made by him. And there is nothing that was made. That was not made by him. That means. That means all things were made by him. And without him the Bible says. Was not anything made that was made. And then it says in verse 4. It says in him was life. And the life was the light of man. That means the life that is in him, that is in the word, was with God. And that word was God. And that same word is the life. And that same word that is the life is the light of all men. And then it says, and the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not so that means the word has the power to penetrate darkness that means the word is light the word is life and darkness cannot comprehend the word of life the word of light that means the word of god is light and so i say to you beloved shine your light jesus says something to us in john chapter number nine verse five jesus said there as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And that complements what the Bible says to us in John chapter number 1. So the word of God was with God. Jesus is God. And so Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. So Jesus is that word and that means Jesus is also the light. The truth is this, beloved, that light has the effect to enlighten and to reform the world. A, a, a world that is immersed in ignorance, in sin, in misery, in fear of demonic oppression. So, the preaching of the word that we are introducing introduces the light, which is Jesus, in the areas of ignorance, in the areas of fear, in the areas of sin, in the areas of sickness, infirmities, in the areas of death, in the life of demonic oppression. And we know that Jesus will always prevail. Hallelujah. In any situation, uh, let me say that again. I say, and we know that Jesus Christ will always prevail in any situation that is introduced to. When you introduce Jesus to a situation, that situation must change. Jesus must prevail in that situation. Every sickness, every infirmity, every cloud, every fear, every activity of the enemy, everywhere where there is sin, where there is fear, anywhere where there is ignorance, when you introduce the word of God there, the word of God must prevail. Can I hear your amen? amen? Hallelujah. I believe so much in that. And I need you to understand that. Anywhere the word of God, because the word of God is Jesus. And the Bible has told us in John chapter 1 that he is the one that created all things. If he created all things, it's like the potter. The potter is the one that molds the clay. He decides. The clay does not decide. So if he's the one that created the world, that means everything he created must sub submit to him, must, be, must surrender to him without any effort as the clay submits to the potter. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at what the Bible says then. This is now, we are in a time where Jesus is now telling us, look, I have all powers. As far as I'm in the world, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So Jesus is now saying, I have gone to heaven, but you are now the light of the world. And he's talking to me, he's talking to you. Follow me as I go, uh, as I take you somewhere. Again, the title of my message is, Shine Your Light. The Bible tells us, if you look in Matthew chapter number 5, Matthew chapter number 5, from verse 14, Hallelujah to Jesus. The Bible says there, glory be to God. The Bible says there, ye are the light of the world. You, 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 you are the light of the world. Talking about me. You are the light of the world. Is your own phone on? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Can you all hear me? Can you all see me? Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Now look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, 14 again. Jesus is saying to you, he's saying to me. He says, you are the light of the world. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candle, on a candlestick. It says, and it is, and it give a light unto all that are in the house. But then it says in verse 16, it says, let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. You see where the text is coming from? Shine that light. Because Jesus is saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world, shine that light. You are the light of the world, shine that light. In your own home, shine that light. In your community, shine that light. In your, in your nation, in your counties, in your borough, shine that light. That's what the Bible is saying to you and to me. In the midst of people in darkness, shine that light. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's what the Bible is saying. Glory be to God. That's what the Bible is saying. Jesus is saying to you, beloved, he's saying, you are the light of the world. You carry that light. So you have the responsibility to, to shine that light. Now, the authority that Jesus has, has not been passed to you and to me. Hallelujah. He says, I am the word. I am the light of the world. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, as long as I'm in the, in the world, I am the light. Now he's saying to us, you are that light. That means the authority that Jesus has is not being passed to me, is not being passed to you. He says, you are the light of the world. It's not just a compliment to say you are the light. It is a responsibility. He says, when you light that candle, it is there. Do not go and hide that candle under a bush. Don't light a, your light and hide it. Jesus says, don't light your candle and go and put it under a bushel. Don't go and light it. No, light it so that men can see. So that people who are in darkness can see. So that those that are in, in pain can see. So that those that are, that are in sin can see. So that those that are in ignorance can see the light. So that those that have no, no understanding, no knowledge, they can see that light. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. So, glory be to God. So it's not for you to shine that light just for yourself. It's for that others can see that light. Hallelujah. So the others can see the light and come to the wisdom, to the light, to the wise counsel, to the leadership. And by all of this, they may glorify your God. That is the essence where you light, you put on the light in the midst of darkness in the midst of fear, in the midst of anarchy, in the midst of sin, in the midst of, 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 of ignorance, so that people can see, people can come, you can, you, can, you can use light as wisdom to help people's understanding so that they can come to the light and glorify your God. It's time to shine your light. Say that with me. It's time to shine my light. Say that one more time. It's time to shine my light. Listen, why do I say it's time? I say it's time because 
we are in a world that is confused at the moment. We are in, we, we, it's time to shine the light. I say it again, where there is darkness, where there is confusion, where there is fear, where there is anarchy, where there is SARS, <laughs> you know, there is SARS, and SARS, in some places in the world, you know, special anti-robbery uh, sports, you know, there's an end date, so you need to shine the light in this environment, you know, here in the UK, you know, called the COVID-19, the, the pandemic is here. And there is gross darkness. This is the time when the light should be should be shone. This is the time to shine the light and in the midst of the deepest darkness, the brightness of that light should reflect. People should take notice of that light and be comforted. Let me say that again. During the time of greatest darkness, of greatest confusion, of greatest fear, of greatest anarchy, of greatest, uh, of greatest confusion, or where you have SARS, NSARS, or COVID-19 pandemic all over the world, that is the time where you have gross darkness, that is the time, is the best time to shine that light. That is when your light will become brightest. And all people will take notice of that light and be comforted that there is hope and there is assurance, hallelujah to Jesus, that there is a way out. The light in you gives comfort. The light in you shows assurance that there is a way out. Even the people in darkness, when they see a light, a little light that is shining through you, through your life, through your deeds, they will take notice and of the brightness come to the effect. Of that light you know uh, this nation uh, United Kingdom in, in its natural season you see we are where darkness comes uh, early we are in that season now where darkness comes early amen you know what, I, what am I saying about that I, what I'm saying is uh, for, for example when it is 5 o'clock 5 p.m. in the evening the atmosphere begins to go dark in our environment now in fact, in a couple of days' time from now, the clock will go forward by one hour. Is that correct? The clock will go forward. We are going to lose one. So that means there is darkness. Darkness will come over the nation. It is a, a, a natural season. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our, our nation and nations of the world are being overtaken by the powers of darkness, especially at this moment. Our nation, our nation, you know, a lot of nations are under... Uh, you know the effect of COVID-19, uh, the pandemic virus is is rife. The R rate is rising. Hallelujah to Jesus. So what am I trying to say? Uh, unless the light, you as that light, arise and show the that darkness has no hold. Unless we arise, and I will get to it in a moment when I say shine your light, then you will see how and what I can do. The best I can, what can I do to shine my light in a practical way? I will share that in a second. But what am I saying is that our nation that is overtaken by the powers of darkness, unless you arise, unless we, the light arises out of the boundary to, to the effect of darkness and say to the darkness, this far will you go, to, to the virus, this far will you go. We arise with holy anger and say to the pandemic and say to this virus, this COVID-19 that is plaguing our economy, oh, plaguing our nations, the nations of the world. If we don't arise, if we don't shine that light, the enemy will continue to prevail. The enemy will continue to have an upper hand. But I pray the name of Jesus, the enemy shall not have any power over your family, over your household, over your career. They will not have power over your business. They will not have power over your children. The enemy will not prevail over this nation, over my nation, over your nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said, no man lights a candle and put that candle under a bushel. It's not all under the bed. It's not meant to be hidden. The light in you, you know that, that you are the light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And I read that scripture to you in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. If you are the light, when it is darkest, that is the time to show that little light. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now let me take it even further. 
right here in the UK, in the United Kingdom, some parts of the United Kingdom, uh, Liverpool, uh, Lancashire, London, are all under tier three. You know, the government has now devised the different tiers, in tier one, tier two, and tier three. And what they are doing is for each tier, different restrictions applies. Uh, and, and it depends the higher the tier you are in, the higher the lockdown and the effect and the consequences of that lockdown. You know, the same thing is happening in Ireland, it's happening in Wales, it's happening in Scotland. They are also going through what we see as a second wave of this pandemic. And they are all applying appropriate measures to ensure that life, that health, that well-being of their citizens are a priority. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, some parts. Uh, uh, in, in the United Kingdom, for example, some parts in this country, some some boroughs, uh, that is like some states, you know, the, the, the leadership, for example, in Manchester, you know, they are fighting against the central government, the, the local government, the local uh, councils uh, uh, and the leaders in that particular borough, they are fighting the central government. They are saying, uh, central government, don't lock us down into a tier three. We don't want to be in tier three. Why? Because of the adverse effect of the lockdown on local businesses, on jobs, and the local economy. So the, the council, they are, they, they are resisting the lockdown, the tier three lockdown. Because the moment you are marked as a lock three, everything shuts down. The hair salon, the barbing salons, the restaurants, the hotels, the, the pubs, everything shuts down. You know, we are praying that the leaders, our leaders will receive wisdom. And this is where we need to shine the light. We are praying for our leaders that they will receive wisdom and lead us and guide us and give us the, the right leadership that will benefit and secure the lives, well-being and the economy for all citizens in the name of Jesus. This is one of the areas I am going to be talking about when I say shine your light. You know, this is the time for us to begin to intercede for our nation. This is the time to begin to, 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 to pray for all the different councils, all the different boroughs, all the different, uh, uh, all our leaders, the councillors, the, 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 the council leaders, you know, the representatives, uh, our prime minister, the presidents of the countries and the nations that are afflicted by this COVID-19 and those in authority that the, the almighty God will give them the wisdom to lead and to guide us and right and um, keep us safe in this time uh, beloved we have a special assignment we have a special assignment you know uh, the, the, the assignment is for us to make a difference hello the assignment is for us to make a difference in our own nation in your own nation we as a body you know we can make a difference and, I, and I'm saying this from the Spirit of the Lord. We can make a huge impact, a great difference in the situation of our nations right now. Because I believe that where the need is greatest, where there is the, the darkness is greatest, that is where the church, that is where the believer should shine the best. That's where the light that the church carries. That is where the, the light that you, as a child of God, that is where that light should shine the brightest. Can somebody say amen? amen? You know, when God created men, he says, let them have dominion. So, you have dominion. You have the authority. God has given every one of us the authority. He says, we should take half dominion, is what he says, when he created man. You know, and he also said that whatever we bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we lose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That is the word of God for us. Jesus says, this authority have I given unto you. You know, it's authority that has been given to him of the Father. He says, I give it unto you. That whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose here on earth, you will lose his head in heaven. And then he says in another place, he says, this authority have I given unto them. To bind their kings with, 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 to bind their kings with chain and their princes with fetters of iron. That means we have the authority. Jesus has given us, has given you the authority. And it is time for us to take action. It is time for us to shine that light. Shining the light is a, 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 a responsibility, as I said earlier, is a, is, a, is a task that we have to do deliberately to shine it. It takes effort to light a candle. 
it takes effort to display that light because we have to hold that light in the face of darkness and god being the source of light being the source of life will help that light to shine and darkness cannot prevail over light i pray in the name of jesus in your own life in your own family in your own community in your own country in your own nation of the world i pray that this covid 19 i pray that this this clarion call for for liberty will not prevail over you the hold of the enemy will not prevail over you over your family over your nation over your your church over the kingdom of god because it is written the church is marching on and the gates of hell shall not it is definitive it shall not prevail if it will not prevail that means the church should arise hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus now what am i talking about you see as a child of god I, I, I thought about this you know what can i do as a child of god what can you do as a child of god what can you do as a believer what can we do as a church what can we do as a community to shine our lives remember my task my assignment by the spirit of god is to say to you shine your light if he says shine your light that means god has already made you the light and the bible has confirmed that in matthew chapter 5 that you are the light of the world so if you are the light of the world then shine that light so what can i do as a child of god what can i do as a believer to shine that light i have put it in three different uh, categories number one to shine that light in the current situation where we are in in this current pandemic and all the different things that we see around number one thing obey our leaders can you say that with me obey our leaders amen now the bible tells me if you look at romans chapter number one the bible says there it says from verse one to two it says let every soul be subject unto the world unto the higher powers for there is no power but of god it says all powers that are that be are ordained of god all powers that be are ordained of god follow me and then it says in verse 2 it says wherefore whosoever therefore resisted the power resisted the ordinance of god and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation now when i say obey our leaders you know we have been advised by the government in the uk for example by the government chief medical advisors chief medical officers uh, to wash our hands regularly amen you know to keep our hands washed wash them that's number one they say to us again they say maintain social distance now this applies in different categories so if you're in tier one that means something else if you're in tier one that means something else. if you're in tier, tier three that means something now this now includes in tier three for example it not means that it includes staying within your own family and not mixing for the time being with another family that is not with your own home that's number two thing they say maintain social distance so that now in tier three it means that you cannot mix with any people or anybody you cannot receive guests in your house it's not a time for family meeting it's not the time for uh, you know you are going to visit your neighbor you want to have a chat no tier three simply means that you can only do that with members of your own household with members of your own family amen so please follow me that for the time being uh, you know and number three is that you wear a face mask <laughs> you know when you are out in a public space you wear what a face mask hallelujah so you wear a face but that's number three you wear a face mask that is anytime you are shopping uh, you are on, on the public transport that is you are on the bus you are on the train you are in the tram you are on the aeroplane etc you have you are expected to be wearing a face mask and the best thing we can do is to obey our leaders and these policies and this is what will help us to shine our light that we are compliant that we we, we 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 are responsible people that we can obey uh, and follow our leaders hallelujah to jesus you know now the benefit of this is that you know this will help the economy this will help to bring the r rate of infection 
of this COVID-19, you have to bring it down so that we can carry on with our new normal, <laughs> our new normal way of life, of doing business and careers, and eventually we will beat this COVID-19 pandemic disease in our community when we follow and obey the instruction of our leaders. Now, the flip side of this, obeying this instruction is that, you know, obeying this simple instruction when I was thinking about this, I was laughing, I was going to write some things which I cannot read here because we are in church. You know, obeying this simple instruction, you know, it helps the family also. If you think about it very well, it helps the family to bond together and spend more time together. You know, families, they don't see themselves. This one is out, that one is in, everybody is trying to avoid each other. You know, this is the time that you have nowhere to go. You have to, it, it has a positive benefit, benefit, uh, a positive synergy, a positive energy that you can deduce out of this. You know, you, you learn to stay together. You know, this means those fathers that are always looking for one excuse or another to go to the pub to, to, to visit their friends just because they want to escape responsibility. Uh, they want to run away from their wives. They want to run away from their children. They will have to grow up now and face the domestic issues in a mature way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I put a screen, you know, those men who are not born again, who like to use uh, work or other excuses to go and feed their side chicks. Yes, I said it after all. <laughs> you can't see your side chicks. You can't. Because you have to stay in your own home. And it's a positive thing. Leave these people alone. Stay at home. You know, truly, we can truly say, if you think about it very well, like the scripture says, it says, all things work together for the good of those that love God. So this is working together to reunite the family, to bring cohesion in the home, to bring love back into the home. Now you can talk to yourself, you can learn to grow together, you can learn to actually watch your children grow. Some people don't ever see their children, they are working 18 hours of the day. They don't see their children grow up. <laughs> now, when the economy is locked down, you have to stay home. And this is uh, one of the benefits uh, where we have to obey our leaders. Can I hear your amen? amen? Number two. Number two reason why uh, I, I believe that, uh, you know, w w when, when I say, what can I do, you know, uh, as a child of God or as a believer or as a church community in this environment, what can I do to shine the light? My number two point that I said here is we have to model good behavior and character. Let me say that again. Model good behavior and character before your neighbor. Model good behavior and character before your neighbor. You know, we grew up when we were younger, we were singing a song. We, we used to sing the song, say, I've got the light of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the light of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. So we, we always sang it right from our youth that we have the light of God. We have the life of God in us. This is the time to shine that light. This is the time to shine that light for people to see. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, we are in the season of fear. Don't let us kid ourselves. We are in a season of uncertainty. We are in a season of, uh, of hopelessness. We are in a season where many people around us are sick. You know somebody who is sick. You know somebody who has been afflicted by this virus. You know somebody who is, who is in, in a time of despondency. Whether they are going to live, whether they are going to uh, live this sickness. You don't know. Some people are hopeless for tomorrow. Some people, they have no hope of what's going to happen to their jobs, to their careers. Some people, they have made plans. Now the plan has to be remade again. It's time for you to shine the light in you. Of what use is that light, beloved? If a person, uh, you know, in you, in a person, if you don't shine the light to your neighbors who are in darkness, who are in fear, who are in despondency, to so that they can see that light and see the hope that you have, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. If, if you have the light, it's a different thing if you don't have it, but it is in you, we have the light. And this is the time where that light can be of the greatest effect. You don't have to do too much. You just say, shine the light. That's all you have to do. Remember your unsaved neighbors. They are watching you. 
your good, your neighbors, if they see your good behavior, if they see your good character, if they see or hear your good words, do you know how impactful that can be to that neighbor, to that community? And that is by you, by one person, by one believer, by one individual shining the light. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. You know, talking about shining the light, you see, I, I speak to a lot of people, whether you are born again or not born again, uh, as a professional in the city, uh, I speak to a lot of people who are not even born again, but their character, but their attitudes, but their words, hallelujah to Jesus, but their words, if you hear, you, you, if you did not know that they are not born again, you would think they are born again. They are so generous in their giving, they are so kind, you know, one of my bosses told me a story that is, is, is touching. She met a man, an old man on the road while jogging. This is a person who does, who is not born again. I hope she's not listening to this sermon. Amen. Who is not born again? Just jogging in the morning, saw an old man. And the, she stopped to talk to the old man. And the old man was saying to, to, the, to the person, he says, I am going now so that I can see green grass, green and green trees around me. He said, why don't you have a, a garden in your home? He said, I made a mistake. The old man replied and said, I made a mistake. Because I am old, I simply cemented, let's use that word. We, I put concrete on the ground so that I don't have any greenery. I don't have any green flowers. I don't have anything green around me. And if this woman says, don't worry, I will come to your house and I will buy all the things that you need and I will create a flower bed for you. I will create, I will create it for you. And I was like, wow, even me, my conscience was judging me. Because I have not offered that to my neighbor, but I do my own in a different way. But what am I saying, beloved, is that, you see, by our behavior, our good behaviors, by our good characters, by our positive words, in this season, we can shine that light. We can change a life one at a time. We can help heal. We can help bring comfort, bring hope to people one person at a time. Like I said, our unsaved neighbors, your unsaved neighbors, they are watching. They are looking at you. It's time to shine that light through your good behaviors, through your characters, through your good words. You know, this is where the light you have been carrying all this while. Oh, I have the light in me. This is the time to, to shine that light. This is where that light will be more and most effective. Look at what the Bible says in First Peter. I, I love this. Uh, First Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 12. The Bible says here, be careful how you behave. I am reading the Living Bible version because this makes more sense. It says, be careful how you behave among your unsaved neighbors. That is verse 12. It says, for then, even they are suspicious of you and talk against you. They will end up praising God for your good works when Christ returns. When Christ returns is when they, when, you know, when Christ returns in their heart. When they see the light, when the scale in their eyes disappear through your light, through your good deeds, through your behavior, through your character, through your positive words. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, all those hours you spent in church services. A lot of us will go to church as if we are going to the bathroom. All those hours you spent in church services, all those prayer meetings, all those night vigils, all those community service, and the good deeds in the community will now be tested. All these things, all your, all your night vigils, uh, and the child of God. I'm going, they see you go to church every Sunday. They hear you binding and losing in the middle of the night. Some people have even called the police that you are disturbing them. This is the time to shine your light. This is the time to shine that light. Even so that your neighbors will know that a different God lives in you. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I, I read the book of Ruth and I saw something there. Look at what Ruth said. You know, Ruth was a woman who was, when things happened, when her husband died, her mother-in-law told her, go back so that you can live your life and, and have children. She said, I will not go. You see, your God will be my God. She changed her mind. If you look at verse 16, Ruth said, yeah, let me read it to you. Ruth said to her, he says, entreat me not to leave thee. This is what your neighbor can say to you when they see your good character. When they hear your good words, when they see how, how, how you are impacting their lives positively, they will say to you, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For whither thou goest, I will go. 
and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people will be my people, and thy God, my God. Can you hear that? Uh, all our evangelism will be a lot easier if we can shine that light brighter. All our several hours evangelism from here to there, by a simple act, people will come to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that will be our portion in Jesus' name. You can also contribute to your neighbor financially. You see them, you see your neighbor, you see their needs. Have you ever contributed or suggested any way to them that they hold you in a higher esteem than the other neighbor who is just like them? You know, have you bought food supplies to them? Have you fed the hungry? Have you prayed for them? You know, have you called a lonely person, a person who is lonely, uh, even ordinary smile, or some people ordinary wave? Have you waved to your neighbor recently? Just a simple wave from your house. That's why you are still maintaining social distancing. You can still wave to your neighbor. And you know, where I live, that is important to some people. Your smile is important to some people. That is you shining the light. You can still shine the light in this season. Can I hear your amen? amen. Finally, number three that I will say is. I have said number one, I say we should do what? Somebody remind me what I said for number one? Obey our, Obey our leaders. Number two, what did I say? Model good behavior and character before your neighbor. And finally, number three, I am saying pray for our leaders. Can you say that with me? Pray. You are the light carrier. And there's a reason I chose these three. There's a reason I'm saying this as number three, that... Despite all the other points that I could raise, I say pray for our leaders. You know, you are the light, you are the light carrier, not the government, not the prime minister, not your president. You know, you are the one that is meant to shine that light, you know, you, you know, by, by praying for our leaders. You know, especially at such a time as this. Uh, you see, hallelujah. Now, most leaders or most leadership will be lacking and we know that they will be lacking of godly or divine ideas or divine direction unless you pray for them you see all over the world so many people are frustrated because the governments and therefore the leadership the, the, the president the prime minister the governor uh, the counselor you know, they are not listening to them or they are not implementing those policies that will improve their living conditions. You know, while it is yet practical, uh, I will say this because I've seen some things recently, it is practical and democratic. And in most countries, it is the inalienable right of the citizens and communities to protest without violence or, or being hindered. Mm -hmm. People, uh, it is an inalienable right to, to protest. You know, if you are not happy with something, you can protest. You know, and it happens all over the world. We must not forget while we are protesting, on the other hand, to continually pray for those in authority. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Bible says about the word of God. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. It says it's able to do certain things. I'm not going there. Now, if it's a two-edged sword, that means you should use a two-edged approach. While you are protesting on the one side, on the other side, we must not forget to pray for those that are in leadership, for those that are in authority. Can I hear your amen? amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. We have to pray for them. Now, don't forget that, you know, uh, you know some leaders, <laughs> this is the irony, some of these leaders are hardened. In the, they, they are hardened in their own ways. You know, they have their own agendas. Don't forget, they are not born again. They are not Christians. They are not believers. They do not reason the way you reason or the way God wants you to reason. They are not guided by that. Amen? But they are guided by their own agendas. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it all? And the Bible says the, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And that's why we have to pray for them. That is what Proverbs 20, uh, chapter 21, verse 1 says. It says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turned it whithersoever he will. So when we pray for the leaders, for our prime ministers, for those in authority, for the medical officers, for the NHS, uh, or, or for the governors and prime minister, uh, presidents of other nations of the world and those in authority, those in charge of our affairs, 
God is able to direct their heart. God is able to mold their heart in the whichever way he wants to go. Now, the Bible did not say looking on to the prime minister. It did not say looking on to the president. It did not say looking on to your state governor or your counselor. In the Bible says looking on to Jesus. So that means we have to continually look on to Jesus, pray for these leaders, so that God can turn their heart in the direction that he wants them to go. That's what he says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. You know, he says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set on the right hand of God, on the throne of God. So, Jesus is the one we should look unto, not the president, not the prime ministers. But remember what the Bible says, it says, the king's heart, the prime minister's heart, those in authority, the president's heart, they are in the hands of the Lord. We must continue to shine our light in their direction. Listen, you see, even the best of presidents, even the best of the well-intended prime minister, the well-intended governor, you know, they are, they are set up to fail. That's what we don't understand. They are set up. If you are not of God, you cannot be ruled of God. That means you are open to the enemy. Except we uphold them in prayer, they will always fail effortlessly. You see, they, they, no matter the good plans they may have, no matter the good plans a good leader has, they are likely to fail if they are not backed up with sincere prayers. And that's what the Bible reminds us. In Psalm 127 verse 1, the Bible says there, except the Lord builds the house, it says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watch over a city or keep that city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. So that is why we have to continually pray for our leaders and those in authority. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, if all powers are ordained, as the Bible says of God, because it's all powers are ordained by God, that it, it, it means to me that leadership is representative of God. Amen. Uh, leadership is representative of God. I'm going to write up now, by the way. Leadership is ordained of God. That means uh, uh, um, authority and leadership is, that leader is a representative of God. Because God put him there and we have to uphold him with prayer. Hallelujah. Especially if that ruler, if that leader is democratically elected by the people. Because the will of the people is the voice of God. Amen. 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 Don't forget the Bible has told us to pray for those that are in authority. The Bible has told us that. That we should pray for those that are in authority. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible has told us that. That we should pray for those that are in authority. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number 2. If you read verse 1 to 3, you will see there. The Bible has said that we should pray for kings and all those that are in authority. So we are going to do just that. We are going to shine our light by praying. Pray with me this prayer. Say this as I pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, Almighty we call upon you call upon to heal our land heal our by the precious blood of Jesus. Almighty God, be merciful. Almighty God, be gracious unto our nation and show us your tender mercies because of your son Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we pray for our leaders that you will be with them at this time. I pray that you will give them wisdom to lead, wisdom to guide, wisdom to instruct all the citizens according to your own guidance and ordinances. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray with me. Mighty God of Israel, I pray we join our voices even right now. Visit our nation. Hold back the works of the enemy. Hold back this pandemic caused by COVID-19 virus. Hold back the reign of the enemy that is ravaging our cities, ravaging our economies, ravaging our nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, heal your people, the people that have been affected by this COVID-19. Heal them. The people that have lost their jobs, 
the people that are in fear of losing their jobs, the people that have lost their marriage and their families, the people that have lost loved ones. Comfort your people at this time, O oh God. Comfort your people at this time, O oh God. Let hope be restored again through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help me to be a conduit to shine your light in my sphere of influence. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. If you have prayed that with me, I believe that the Almighty God he will do something new in your life and in my life and in our nations. I urge you this week, do something different. Shine the light of Jesus. Amen. Shine the light of Jesus. Shine your light. Jesus says you are the light. We must shine that light. You have the authority, you have the power to shine the light. And as you do so, the light of Jesus will shine through you. And the impact shall be significant. And there will be a turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now God has not abandoned you. Don't abandon yourself. God has not forsaken you. Don't forsake your, yourself. It's time to shine your light. Arise. Shine. For your light has come. God bless you. Go out there and have a blessed week. You are shielded. You are protected. In Jesus' name. Have a glorious week, beloved. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. All right.